So hello guys, what's up and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's me, your girl, Barista Neze, and this is Nezeville. When you are a highly reverent traditional monarch in Nigeria, marrying plenty of wives is not news at all. After all, the late Alafi of Oyo before his demise married 13 wives, some even penned the number at 18, most of whom stayed with him in togetherness before his demise. But what is news and is sure to raise brows is when these wives do not stay and after a few years or months, they continuously run away. As is with the case of the 51st Oni of Ife, Oba Adeyeye Enito Ogunwusi, who just got married for the fourth time a few days ago after his three previous wives left him simultaneously. If you are not conversant with the Yoruba tradition and the weight that Oba Adeyeye occupies as the Oni of Ife, let me enlighten you a little. The ancient town of Ileife is considered the ancestral and spiritual home of the Yorubas, Nigeria's second largest ethnic group. Ife is said to be where the Yoruba race started from. And Oba Adeyeye is said to be a direct descendant and shares bloodline with the founder of the Yoruba race itself, Odudua. The 47-year-old Oni of Ife, Oba Adeyeye, from the royal house of Giesi, I hope I pronounced it correctly, he is the third of seven children of his parents and began his reign seven years ago in 2015. He had a very balanced family foundation. As a matter of fact, his parents just celebrated their 35th wedding anniversary only a few months ago. He got great education, attended Pois de la Creme Nursery Primary Secondary and Tertiary Institutions here in Nigeria. After he graduated as an accountant, the prince, as he then was, decided to pursue his passion in business and entrepreneurship. And for 12 years, he delved into engineering, procurement, and construction, both locally and internationally, until his coronation in 2015. In many parameters, the Oni can be said to be a very successful person. But one angle of his life that hasn't generated so much success is his love and marriage life. Causing people to wonder why the young, handsome, brilliant, educated, powerful and highly influential Oni keeps getting his wives leave him despite all the privileges and pecks that comes from being the wife of the much reverend Oni of Ife. The Oni of Ife had his first marriage in 2008 to his first Olori, a woman simply known as Bukola or Buki. They were married for seven years and this marriage ended the very year that he took on the mantle as Oni. Several theories have emerged as to the reason why their marriage crashed. The first theory had it that her inability to produce children was a major contributor, especially being married to a traditional ruler of that standing. Of course, a lot of value will be placed on childbearing, especially male children. So, so many people believed that this was the major cause of their strained relationship and why Buki could not have been the official queen of the Oni. Another theory had it that Olori Bukola was not in support of the Oni ascending the throne as Oni of Ife, a position which she believed was too fetish and traditional for her. It was rumored that she just could not cope with all the traditional rites and ceremonial rites and rituals that come with that very powerful African position. And as soon as he took the mantle, Shortly after his coronation, she left the palace for the United Kingdom and never turned back. That marriage lasted seven years, the seven years just preceding his coronation. And that would be the longest marriage of the Oni till date. Report has it that the Oni swiftly moved on and got engaged in a sizzling love affair with a woman named Bimbo Oduyemi who was based in Canada. 
It was said that they met during his college years and they were really smitten with each other. But that relationship could not sail beyond the riverbanks as Bimbo already had two children. And of course, as the Oni, a traditional ruler of that standing, it was totally forbidden for him to get married to a woman who already had children with another man. Thus, his imperial majesty, the Oni of Ife, had to find love and marriage elsewhere. So on the 16th of March, 2016, just one year after his first marriage crashed, the Oni of Ife took another wife. The beautiful queen Wurola Zainab Obano from the ancient Benin kingdom. Queen Wura, as she is fondly called, had the presence, the aura, the grace, and the charm of a queen. And the Oni even attested that choosing Wura as a queen was a choice from the gods. So a very elaborate traditional wedding for the both of them held in Benin and it was shortly followed by a wedding reception there at the Oni's palace in Oshu State, Ileife. Hopes and expectations were quite high regarding the royal couple. People were quite optimistic that this marriage was bound to work as it is not the case of Queen Wurola not knowing what she got into just like the first wife. Queen Wurola knew that this is the only of Ife. She knew the traditional expectations that come from both her and him and she willingly and voluntarily agreed to marry him. So this is not a case of oh or she didn't anticipate what she was seeing and all of that. Everybody was convinced that she knew who she was getting married to and she was up to the task. So well wishes poured in, everybody were optimistic, everybody beamed with smiles seeing both of them adorned in their traditional outfits in white, attending functions together and living as husband and wife. And we thought that alas, finally, the Yoni of Ife has found a long lasting Olori. But that was not the case. Because in 2017, just one year after their marriage, the Queen of Ife, Olori Wurola, took to social media to announce that her marriage to the Oni has crashed. In her statement, she debunked a rumor making the rounds that this was as a reason of infidelity on her own part. And she went further to hint on domestic violence. Let us hear her own words. What I can confirm is that the Oni and I are no more. I inhale love and I exhale gratitude. My journey continues as a humanitarian, aiding women and victims of domestic violence and abuse with the United Nations. No matter how much time you've invested, no matter the use of media to silence and manipulate, no matter the circumstance, slander, embarrassment, threats and lies, get out and seek immediate help. We have got to stop this culture of shaming and vilifying women with false stories of infidelity and nefarious behavior. The spreading of false information through sources afraid to be identified as the mark of cowards and the cover-up for guilty parties to justify their horrific actions. There is absolutely no truth to the media circulated lies of infidelity and infertility on my part. She went further to conclude, saying that the throne is sacred and the attempts to tarnish the name of the queen in defense or on behalf of a silent king makes all involved look terrible. That is the statement of Olori Wurola, where she categorically cleared it out that she was neither unfaithful or infertile in that marriage. Olori Wurola is said to have relocated out of Nigeria to an Arab country where she has remarried an Arab multi-millionaire and has bore a daughter. It is worthy of note that the marriage between Olori Wurola and the Oni of Ife again born no children. Fast forward to 2018, another one year after his second marriage crashed, the Oni of Ife took to his Facebook account to announce that he has found and taken another wife, a wife for the third time. And this time around, 
it was 25 year old evangelist and pastor's daughter Naomi Moranike Oluwashi. I waited patiently upon the Almighty, the King of Kings. He eventually did it in the midst of many trials. Shile Kunola Moronike Naomi, the greatest arsenal you can apply on this highly reverent throne with many rules and regulations in the midst of undiluted tradition, heritage, and culture is the fear of God in you, which is the beginning of your wisdom on this throne of Odudua. You are welcome home, my beautiful and adorable queen. <sighs> what a romantic Oni. But at this point, people had already gotten quite apprehensive and suspicious somewhat. They asked, why are the wives of the Oni coming and going like the seasons? It's not like he's taking new wives to add to the existing ones. No, he has never been married to two women at the same time. It is always a case of one living and he had to remarry and that one living and he had to remarry. They found this quite disturbing and wondered if there was more to it than met the eyes. Well, despite her deep Christian faith, Naomi, just like her predecessors, went through some traditional rites such as the blood cleansing, the feet washing and all of that before she was allowed entrance into the palace. And before long, the public fell helplessly in love with this young, beautiful, charming Oluri, who was always pictured smiling and whispering in her husband's ear in public events to everybody's delight. They were such a sight for sore eyes. To add the cherry on the cake, in November of 2020, the Olori bore a son and the palace and well-wishers scattered all over the world were thrown in jubilation. This will be the Oni's first child since he took the mantle. He is reported to have bore a love child, a daughter, when he was a teenager. This was his first son and his first child as Oni. And everybody were convinced that this child would further strengthen the bond between the Olori and the Oni of Ife. <sighs> but this was not the case. As again, one year after the birth of the son of the Yoni, Olori Naomi took to both her Instagram and Facebook accounts to announce that the marriage between her and the Oni has crashed for the third time. Olori Naomi alleged very strongly that the monarch's public identity is at variance, is conflicting, is at par with his true identity. She had this to say. I did my best to endure and make it work. Many times I smiled through the struggle, but I have finally realized I had just one assignment, my son. And when God is done, he is done. He chose Saul to be king and when he was done, he told the prophet Samuel, I have moved on. Religion was never an issue between us. Please refer to my interview on News Central TV. Instead, His Majesty had a picture he would love the world to see and perceive him as, and another one, which is his true self. Mm, very serious allegation. The evangelist then declared, Today, I announce the beginning of a new dawn and the close of a chapter. Today, I am a mother to God's unique gift. I am no longer a slave to my thoughts of perfection. I, at this moment, announce that I shall no longer be referred to as the wife to the Oni of Ife or as queen of Ileife, but as queen of the people and mother of my adorable prince. Wow. She further explained, as many would love to assume, throughout our life as a couple, I was the only married wife to him. There were side attractions, but it was never an issue. Wow. This statement is very deep. 
Of course, these queens will be very mindful and careful with their selection of words, you know, so as not to offend the reverend throne, okay? But if you dig deep into these words, it is pregnant with plenty of meanings. Now, money and finances is not a problem. The Oni is very comfortable and his Oloris get the best life. Religion was not a barrier. She mentioned it that the Oni was very comfortable with her practicing her Christianity while he went on practicing his traditional belief. There was no problem. Infidelity also was not a challenge. Of course, being married to the Oni, you do not expect exclusivity, do you? Or monogamy, of course not. So these women are well prepared, knowing that of course other women will be entertained. And Olori Naomi has admitted that infidelity was not a problem on either path. Now these are the major challenges that cause trouble in marriages. Money, finances, infidelity and all of that. And the Oloris are saying this is not the issue. So the question begging answers is, what is the reason? What is the problem? Why are the Onis Oloris leaving the marriage, leaving the comfort, leaving the graceful lifestyle that comes with that position and running away at these short intervals? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. The second Olori hinted on domestic violence and now the third is alleging that the Onis true identity is not the same with what he portrays in the media. He's a totally different person. You know that in the media, the Oni is this very, you know, easygoing, loving, generous, and kind person. That is who we all see and know the Oni to be. But Olori Naomi is warning that <laughs> this is not the same person she sees at home. Well, shocking for some, but not shocking for most. Only nine months after Olori Naomi announced the end of her marriage with the Oni, the Oni has remarried for the fourth time. And this time, he just concluded his traditional wedding rites with Miriam Ajibola Anako, who hails from the Ebira ethnic group of Kogi State, and is said to be an oil and gas executive. The marriage took place at the palace of the monarch at Ileife, and the traditional rites were performed right at the palace building, thus marking the beginning of a new marriage era in the life of the Oni of Ife, one of Nigeria's strongest influential traditional monarchs. And that brings us to the end of this tumultuous and fragile married life of our dear reverence Oni, His Imperial Majesty, Oba Adeyeye. Do let us know your thoughts, your feelings, your observations, your suspicions, and your feedback right in the comment section. I would love for this to be as engaging and interactive as it can be. So thank you once again for watching. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Drop your comments, of course. Subscribe to this amazing channel. If you're still yet to, turn on your bell notifications and stay glued for so much more. It's me, your girl, Barrison Neza, and this is Nezaville. I'll see you guys in my next one for now. Bye. Mm -hmm.